And three, two, one. What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, the Lo Fi Horror Guy. Welcome to another episode of the Lo Fi Horror Guys Growing On You Live. Today, super, super excited. I cannot wait for uh, today's episode. I've got my boys from Neon Brainiacs. Uh, you know, if you don't know them, you got to know them. They are super, uh, just a, just a, a great uh, podcast. One of my favorites. Uh, say one of the only one only podcasts i listen to so first off we're gonna have ben jump on and then we're gonna have greg right after ben what's up man what's going on dude can you hear me how's it going yeah i can hear you yeah sick all right very very cool all right man can you hear me Uh, can you hear me i can i can it sounds professional okay good (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> the quality is outstanding some of these things come through and you know you i have a little bit of a hard time with hearing and uh this application is only as good as it can be so it's like shit you know trying is your hardest <laughs> i hear you man i hear you oh, man, uh, thanks for having me on hell yeah thank you so much for being on man like i was just saying you you guys' podcasts i've got a couple of them that i listen to but there's not very many week after week i love your stuff i really appreciate the the the, the product that you guys put out there uh if you That's have awesome if you haven't seen the show before basically this is growing on you live i start with a couple of icebreaker questions and then we dive into a little bit more of like a body of you and your craft and then uh, I've got a finale segment that's just for you, Ben. And then I'll have one as well for uh, my man, Greg. All right, man. I'm, I'm pumped, dude. I'm pumped. Sweet. Sick. We're going to dig right into it, my man. So right off the bat, if you can hit me with three of your favorite horror movies. Three of my favorite horror movies. Well, one of them uh, is on the shirt you're wearing right uh-huh. now. Uh-huh. A yeah. recent episode. Um, I know. I... Um, I love that movie. It was a big uh, movie for me in my life. Um, It made me want to make movies, a hundred percent. Yeah, like I, I just love the mix of humor and comedy and um, horror and gross out. And I mean, Bruce Campbell just just basically putting on a tour de force of physical comedy throughout that whole movie. Um, But yeah, that's one of my favorites. Um, I love the thing from John Carpenter. Mm -hmm. Uh, That is just hands down, uh, might be my favorite Carpenter flick. I know a lot of people might cry foul on that, but uh, I love that one. Um, Hell yeah, I agree. Really fucking good. Um, And then, I don't know, man, number three, there's just, there's so many, there's so many to pick from. Um, But I would probably just go, uh, probably I'll I'll say Friday the Thirteenth Part Four just because I think it's a Ooh. perfect slasher movie. Hell and yeah, I, I love slasher films, so yeah. that's definitely one of my favorites. Sure, that's uh, that's probably my favorite sequel, if not out of the whole series. That's that's uh, uh, my my favorite Friday the Thirteenth as well. I love like the whole practical effects and Tommy mm-hmm. making all the masks and shit. Like so cool, you can't go wrong with that Glover. movie. Crispin Glover, Glover. <laughs> right, right, right. And then you bring up Evil Dead too. You know, I had to show you. You guys talked about the old, uh, the old laughing deer, <laughs> dude. Dude, that is sick. That is sick. <laughs> I absolutely that love that fucking... you guys, you guys touched on that because I was like, yes, that is like one of my favorite parts of that movie. It's so ridiculous. You can't talk talk about that movie and not talk about the laughing deer. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like, I mean, right. It's, right. It's definitely a vital part of that flick. Yeah, very silly, very silly for sure. So now, if I were to come to Pittsburgh, all right, I'm touring on through, and I asked you as a as a Pittsburgh native, I said, Ben, tell me what what's a local food or restaurant staple that I I have to I have to dig into. Well, you know, my Pittsburgh friends are going to say this is cliche, but definitely uh, Primanti Brothers. Um, okay. It's a big chain around here, especially here in Pittsburgh. There's some out in Ohio, and I think maybe they're down in West Virginia now. Um, but, uh, yeah, they have a special sandwich where, uh, you know, you can get various types of meats or whatever, but it always comes on Mancini's bread, which is like really good bread around here. And then, um, Mm -hmm. it's topped with French fries on the sandwich and coleslaw on the sandwich. And it's like sort of like a vinegary kind of coleslaw. Oh, it's fucking, it's fantastic. Um. Google it. Okay. Google it. Okay. Trust me. Yeah. I, it's uh, definitely the Permani Brothers. Yeah. They're coming to Okay. 
Okay, mm. I was trying, you know, I was looking online too, and I was, I, they, it pulled up a couple of different things that I was naming, and then it showed a picture of that sandwich, but all the shit that it was naming was not that sandwich, and I'm like, yeah. what the <laughs> fuck is this thing? <laughs> Damn, yeah, okay. that's uh, all right. the Permani Brothers sandwich, it's delicious, um, Sick. I like it a lot. A good breakfast place right down, uh, really near my house, there's a place called Eggs and At. And at is sort of like and that, but in Pittsburghese, it's just N apostrophe A T. It's like <laughs> you guys go into baseball game and that, you know. Like that's just one of the things we okay. say. So there's a diner here called Eggs and At, and okay. um, it's a really kind of hole in the wall kind of place. Amazing breakfast food. Um, I got a shout out to Kelly's home fries or her home fries. Oh, are fucking dope. <laughs> Yeah, uh, stand so, up. There you go. There's there's two. I don't know if you asked for two, but you got two. There you go. I mean, perfect. You know, it's something, you know, because I started, uh, I've started getting a couple of people on the show that are from uh, international, you know, and so I was like, man, I should start asking about just different things for like traveling wise, you know, hey, you're a native to there. What is awesome? What do I have to check out? You know, like, and that's so I, you know, hit on different things. So I appreciate that. That's a little bit of a new segment. But uh, thank you very much. I mean, there's, there's a lot of great food around here, but there's also awesome I mean, like the Andy Warhol Museum is here. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Because Andy Warhol's from near Pittsburgh. Right. And um, that's a great place to check out. You know, Monroeville Mall, uh, because Dawn of the Dead was shot mm -hmm. there. Right. Um, yeah, we got a lot of cool things. I know. It's so funny listening to you guys' show, too, because, like, my friends and I, all through school we're talking about like that's a dream like that's going to fucking outer space dude is going to the monroeville mall and you guys are like oh yeah it's down the street like i don't know it's all right yeah i've been on the escalator yeah. like it's not that big of a deal like get, yeah get out of here dude <laughs> it's funny yeah because we're, we're spoiled yeah we're spoiled right, right. Beautiful. a lot of horror royalty living here like uh, i mean sometimes you just see tom savini just like hanging out like greg saw him buying gatorade at target the other day and was like Ah, I probably shouldn't talk to him because he's he can, you know, he's notoriously a little, um, let's say prickly, you know, when you when with fans who come up to him when he's like trying to do everyday shit. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't say that I wouldn't at least yell his name and wave though. Oh yeah, he'd probably, <laughs> probably sneer at you. He'd probably be like, mm, "Let yeah. me buy my fucking Gatorade, dude." Yeah, You're right. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's my story. Shit. <laughs> so now, uh, running on a little segment that you have from your show, if I were to ask you. Uh, you know, if if you could say any actor out there was a dollar store Ben Deedles, who would that be? <laughs> uh, man, dollar store Ben Deedles. I don't know. Um, man, that's a good question. Uh, huh. I don't know. I recently, uh, one of our our friends, uh, our podcast friends, Ghoul on Ghoul. <laughs> Who we've mm -hmm. had on our show a few times. Um, Amanda from Guangul said, I look like the guy from The Vast of Night. Yeah. It's a new movie yeah. on Amazon Prime. I don't know if yeah. you're familiar with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She said, I kind of look like, she's like, this guy reminds me of Ben. And, you know, me and my wife were watching. I was like, hey, Amanda says, I look like this guy. My wife says, you're much more handsome. And, you know, she has <laughs> to say that because right. she's my wife. But, right. you know, so. To me, that's uh, Dollar Store Ben Deedles, the guy from Beautiful. Fast of Night. I don't know his name. That's a, it's a fun movie if anyone hasn't checked that out yet. Okay. I, I know who you're talking about, too. I think I'm going to have to watch the movie and see because I haven't seen the movie yet. But, uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. That's funny that you mentioned that. That's one thing. You, you know, kind of have the same hair and the glasses. So, yeah, like, that's yeah. kind of, yeah. Okay. So. All right. But for the longest time, you know, something that I've mentioned as far as different actors looking like somebody else is, you know, like a bootleg version of this person or a boot, you know, and then yeah. I'm listening to your show and you guys are saying a dollar store version of something. I'm just like, oh, my God. That is spot yeah. on. A, a, a beautiful analogy. I get so, Jimmy Fallon a lot. Some people are like, you kind of like Jimmy <laughs> Fallon. I'm like, all right, maybe. I don't yeah, know. maybe a little bit. <laughs> not, not, not terribly, but uh, being, you know, being modest, sure, why not? Um, I mean, so, there's worse people. They, they could say I look like, you know, our president or something. So, yeah, <laughs> all, right. all right. That's good. We'll cut I'm it glad down. I don't look fine. like that guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if uh where, where did you start as far as your your horror origin where did it all start for you um well i mean it started really young um i um was very privileged to see american werewolf in london on television when i was probably about five or six years old 
and um, okay. it scared the bejesus out of me. And uh, <laughs> my my babysitter, it was an older woman, um, was like, "You sure you can watch this?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, everything's fine." And I was glued to the TV that whole movie. I'd never seen anything like it. I remember halfway through, she was like, "You sure you're okay?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm fine." You know, like just like, eh. like yeah, yeah. Um, but that kind of started it, and you know, me being, um, you know, I, I'm 36 years old, so uh, the video store era was big for me growing up. So sneaking off into the video section and just looking at the covers of the tapes and the standees of like Freddy and Pinhead and things like that mm-hmm. would honestly give me nightmares. And I was fascinated by it. And eventually when my, my dad would like kind of start letting me rent that stuff, it, that was it. It was just like, yeah, once I started renting movies from that section, I couldn't stop. And I haven't stopped for, mm, I don't know, 25 years or so. <laughs> so right. Yeah. Right. Is American Werewolf from London, is that your, that's the first horror movie you think you ever saw then? Oh, yeah. For sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. Damn. Yeah, that's uh, that's a little extreme for a first. <laughs> I mean, it was on TV. It was a TV cut, so I'm sure it was edited. Oh but to yeah. My, okay. Okay. To, sure. To my six year old brain, I I didn't fucking know. You know what I mean? I know. Like it, yeah. You know, I think it would be it would be a sick idea for somebody to start releasing TV versions of movies, like on DVD or something, because like. Yeah my fondest memories are sitting in front of like a eight inch screen watching Halloween one and two around Halloween. And, you know, there's certain shit that's like edited out or even different scenes that, you know, you watch cuts now, you know, and you're like, where was that part? And it's like, well, it wasn't ever, it was a, you know, straight for TV cut. I'm such a geek. I have the Halloween TV cut on a VHS oh, shit. and the new Halloween two Blu-ray, I believe from shout factory has the TV cut of part two with Damn. all sorts of deleted scenes in it yeah so oh uh, man i got your, your check wish that out. your wish has come true at least oh, for halloween shit. <laughs> yeah man i gotta i gotta check that out you is the is the, the first halloween is on a vhs you said there's a vhs version of it yeah where they put the tv scenes back in the movie because they shot some extra scenes right. during the making of part two yeah yeah for halloween one to be aired on tv so there's some stuff of like loomis at the hospital and um, there's actually a scene with um, PJ Souls and, and Jamie Lee Curtis that they reshot and stuff. So Weird. it's pretty neat. Huh. Um, Hell so yeah, yeah. I, I, first, I first saw those on TV, too. I'll never forget when my dad let me stay up to watch Halloween on Halloween night. And um, I remember when it was over, you know, you just see that imprint of Michael Myers and you're just like, oh, my God, you know. And then it's like. <laughs> Coming up next, Halloween 2, more yeah. of the night peak. I was like, it's not over? Yeah, right, right, right. How and the hell is had there to more? Sit there. Right. I had to sit there and watch the whole fucking second one. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah I'll never yeah, forget funny. that. My dad is just laughing the whole time. He just loved laughing at me being scared. So, oh, yeah. Thank you, Dad. Now, <laughs> now, when you were younger, what were some go-to uh, local buy or rental shops uh, for videos for you? Oh, uh, we had three around here. Um, we had instant replay video. Uh, that was like the big one, and like I mean, everybody was in that place on Friday night. Um, mm-hmm. My mom was like real good, at, like like watching like like when people return the videos, and uh, she was like a <laughs> hawk, man. It's like Jurassic Park came in. She was like. She's like, God, you know, like, um, so there was instant replay. Uh, there was Ace video, and Ace video was a little, little seedier, but they had the better like horror shit and the better like action shit. You know, they had like the Ray Don video stuff. They had like all the all the canon movies, Big Box. You know, um, yeah, they were good. And then we had Select A video, and that one was okay. We didn't go to that. I, I remember that one closing. Uh, rather quickly but yeah those were the three that you know i went to and of course we have a big chain of grocery stores around here called giant eagle giant eagle and um for a while they had their own video store in all their supermarkets so oh okay they usually had they usually had a pretty big selection too so we we had a lot of video stores around okay It it was great what did you have as far as for for buying you know for your collection 
Uh, you go to the mall, you know, okay. um, Suncoast video. Yes, dude. Um, I love yeah. that place. Rest in peace. Like, yeah, That's you not look still at around, popular... is it? No, not, at least not here. Yeah, not um, here either. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, Suncoast video. Uh, you know, you look at a copy of, like, Reservoir Dogs on VHS for, like, $24 <laughs> or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, uh, th that they're like basically the mall, like, um, some of the record stores, in, at least around here sold movies too. So we would do that. And then, you know, of course there was like Kmart and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, but mostly it was renting. I gotta be honest. I was a, you know, my dad was pretty hip to like hooking the two VCRs up and dubbing tapes and right. so we we did a lot of that and I hope yeah. the FBI is not listening. <laughs> right. right. All the years and years of movies that you have in a in a big catalog. Oh yeah. Oh we destroyed them for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so now if we, we fast forward a little, you know, some some years and years later here now and we're uh we're on to Neon Brainiacs. So the podcast mm -hmm. for, for you and Greg Tell me from your memory, what was the origin behind how this all started and how, you know, you kind of came to like, yeah, we should do this. A hundred percent, Greg. Um, we, Greg and I have been in a couple bands together and um, we were always just, you know, before and after practice, like most of the times we'd meet up to practice, it was mostly bullshitting about movies or whatever for like I'd say seventy percent of the time, and then thirty percent of the time was actually jamming and writing music. And, things. <laughs> and for a long time, he was like, oh, "I've been wanting to start a podcast about '80s horror movies," and um, he just kind of kept bringing it up. And I was like, "Well, let's, let's do it." You know, I was like, "I don't know, let's give it a shot." And we recorded an episode. It was kind of fun, and that was I think three years ago almost. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we just kept doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was all Greg. It was Greg's idea. I was just like, yeah, I'll do it. And then, <laughs> yeah, it was it was his his uh, his baby, if you will. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, like, damn near what two hundred episodes later. Yeah, yeah, we're getting up there. You think of the yeah, '80s horror never... movies, you know, as far as like since some of these different like companies that are coming out recently, you know, like Severn or Vinegar Syndrome. I thought for the longest time that I knew the majority of horror movies that are out there and there's still shit Same. from from 40 years ago that I've never even heard of. Didn't even know existed whatsoever. Yeah. Crazy. Oh yeah, Greg Greg has some kind of master list. He's like, we could do the podcast for like, I think he said like seven or eight years. Something like that. Holy there's that shit. many 80s horror movies. So I'm like, alright, well, have a look. <laughs> let's go where's my contract let's write it up yeah let's watch all this horse shit so. <laughs> oh my god well speaking of horse shit what's the worst movie that you've ever had to cover for the show <laughs> oh man yeah there's been some real stinkers that we've done um i gotta be honest i uh, i hated um there's one called home sweet home with uh, a okay. guy who was like body by jake or whatever. I don't know if you remember this guy. He used to have like infomercials in the '90s about exercise equipment, or maybe it was an exercise video. I don't know. Yeah. Um, there's a terrible slasher movie set around Thanksgiving that um, that we did, and I just I couldn't stand that one. I just thought it was awful. Um, that and like I know a lot of people are going to give me uh, crap for this. Um, I really, I think I hated Street Trash. Now, oh, okay. I was so excited to watch that because I just heard so much about it. Mm -hmm. And then um, when I watched it, I just like, I don't know. I just, I hated, I just hated the whole vibe of it. The effects were really cool. Um, and, you know, it's, it's competently made. I just, it's just really mean and like nasty and there's just nobody likable in it. And it's <laughs> like ra rape and like treating the homeless, like, just shit like garbage it just yeah. yeah i'm just eh, I'll, I'll pass on that one yeah. i get why okay. people like it because of the effects and things but it's just like it's a little too mean-spirited for me so. okay okay that's that's funny you bring up street trash because i used to be in a band uh and we were doing like kind of like a halloween series of music videos 
and we were kind of tossing around the idea of doing different music videos based on a horror movie and doing like little like anthology stories and one of the stories nice. was street trash and i'm like dude that you know i'm just thinking i'm like that movie's not good i don't really like yeah. that movie and they're like well <laughs> let's just take the effects and make it good and then they made me the only fucking actor in the video so i'm like <laughs> oh all right you know but it actually turned out very sick so it, uh, you know that's that's that i i agree that's one of those movies that i want to lock I want to like a lot more than what I really do. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I think it's just, it was just one of those ones that I had heard so much about and I was so excited to finally sit down and watch it. And then when I watched it, I was like, ah, I just, I can't get behind this, but the effects are cool. And I do think right. it would make for a good music video. So yeah. yeah. I'll send you a link, my dude. <laughs> yes, please. Um, so please. now on, on the contrary, if you could recommend any one episode, of the show to you know somebody that is just uh, hearing about you guys what would be the first episode that you would mention um anything where we have uh, the ghoul on ghoul ladies on i think they've done uh three or four episodes at this point um mm -hmm. uh jason takes manhattan we did with them yeah. we did a movie called uh oh uh, there's a bunch of them we've, we've done with them but um uh they're all funny Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I don't know. There's just a really good rapport between, um, the four of us and mm -hmm. they're always really funny episodes. So I'd say, yeah, the Jason takes Manhattan one, check that one out. It's really long, but if you're looking to kill some time, then, um, yeah, Not, yeah, a lot, lots Not of fun there. To start. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. There's a really good back and forth between the four of us. So any yeah. ones with the ghoul on ghoul ladies are great. Um, yeah, we, and we we always we're always having a lot of fun on that show. So really, any episode you could tune in and and probably get a couple of yucks out of it. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's the fun thing too. You know, as far as like you know, you have certain shows where it seems like it's a lot more fun with someone, uh, you know, with guests being on. But then there's other shows where you know, just listening to you guys is always an absolute great time. Uh, but Ghoul on Ghoul, and then you just recently had Stupid Movies on, who like. Oh, you, yeah. you guys are like my four favorite people and doing videos or podcasts or anything so that was a ton of fun then you covered evil dead 2 which was fucking awesome yeah uh, those guys are great um it's it's been a long time coming trying to get those guys on the show so we mm. finally did and i'm glad that we did because those guys are great yeah so so fun what uh what what is your favorite movie that you'd never seen uh up until covering for the show Ooh man, that's another. Or really or good one, one or one of them. Um, I'll just go with something recently that we covered. Um, this movie called Pin, yes, nineteen eighty eight, yes, blew my mind, man. Yes. Like it's not even that. Like it, it was just one of those like psychological kind of horror films. Yeah, and um, I just expect I was like, all right, I'm gonna watch this piece of shit and talk about <laughs> it, and then like I ended up like really liking it, and I thought it was really. Wild. And I actually bought the book, which I haven't read yet. My wife read it already. She said it was great. Oh, um, really? Sweet. So yeah, it, it it interests me that much that I that I bought the book. It was based on. So I uh, yeah, I really dug that one. It's it's free on YouTube if anyone's curious. Mm -hmm. um, really strange little movie. Uh, yeah. I, just, I really liked it. I don't know. That's definitely one of the ones that that uh, kind of struck gold on that. I one. I was so excited to see you guys uh, announce that you were doing that because I was like, oh my God, please don't shit on this movie. I love it so much. Like, it's just one oh, of yeah. those just very weird, you know, kind of leaves an odd taste in your mouth well after watching yes. it, you know, and it was just kind of one of those things, you know, there were certain aspects as far as like, I never looked at the whole like weird incestual relationship. So I was like, oh, yeah. God damn it! Which, but uh, which apparently so is way more, way more apparent in the book. In the book, yeah. yeah, that's what in I've heard. Book. Yeah, okay. It's but your wife sounds Pin. good, though, huh? Oh, she loved it. Yeah, Sweet. she's like, it's fucking weird. She's like, it's way weirder than the movie. And I was like, Jesus, I gotta read this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I can't imagine. Holy shit! So now, uh, on top of uh, you know you being involved with Neon Brainiacs, you also have BPO Films. Tell us a little bit about yeah. how that started, and uh, you know what some what some recent things that you have going on with that. Very cool. Um, yeah, it's basically a collective of three filmmakers. It's myself, uh, my buddy Blake O'Donnell, and my other buddy uh, Ryan Lintner, um, who are just friends of mine. Um, you know, we all kind of went to film school together and things. Um, our paths kind of crossed on various different projects, and 
we just kind of teamed up and sort of created like this comedy trio, if you will. And um, yeah, we've been making movies. We we figured out the other day for about ten years now. So okay. um, pretty wild. Uh, we have a movie that's hopefully coming out this year. Um, it's uh, trying. We're trying to get it distributed. It's called Bergeron Brothers Wedding Videographers. Um, <laughs> it's super funny. It's like basically like The Office meets Dumb and Dumber kind of deal. Um, oh my god! It's great. There's there's a trailer on our Facebook page if anyone's curious to check Is that this... out. We just heard from. Uh, some of the guys the other day, they're trying to get that movie distributed and, and they're saying it's looking pretty good. So, um, awesome. So that's coming out. Of course, Slaughter Drive is uh, mm -hmm. a big one that we did. It's uh, SRS Cinema put that out. Um, it's available on Amazon Prime if anyone wants to stream it for free or um, you know, you can pick up a DVD or whatever from SRS or Amazon or whatever. Uh, that one did really well. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're actually filming one now that uh, I can't really say too much about. But, um, yeah, we're in the midst of, of shooting another one. This is our, I believe, sixth feature film. Okay. Yeah, I think it's our sixth. So, yeah, and then um, Blake and I were in a couple really big movies that shot last year that are hopefully coming out soon. So, Oh, um, right. I do a lot of acting work, too. Yeah, so... Right, um, right. Yeah, like, we got one coming out called The Boonies, which um, just got a distribution deal, I think, might be in select theaters, so... Oh, shit. Let's see, I play a bad guy in that, so I'm pretty excited for people to see that. Okay, that, so my next question was actually, uh, you know, you, you do, you, you know, aside from directing, you also act in, you know, some of your features, mm -hmm. too. Um, what what do you kind of you know embody as far as like your ideas of if you're trying to do like a comedic thing uh you know if you're trying to do something you know scary do you have certain uh you know actors that you kind of have in the back of your mind that you you try to you, you try to embody a little bit oh for sure i mean um just you know my basic influences uh even guys that just wanted wanted to you know made me want to be funny um you know especially if uh, probably john candy is like one of my biggest oh, yeah. influences uh in life uh bill murray um is a big one eddie murphy um is huge for me um so that's always like coming into mind when i'm doing you know comedy stuff uh crispin glover is another one too because I, I frequently get cast as a nerd <laughs> um, so yeah crispin glover uh is somebody that kind of comes to mind but i always try to make it my own i always just try to be just the best thing you could do is just be yourself you know mm -hmm. and uh you know and in whatever the you know take direction and you know yada yada you try to be the character if you will but try to bring as much of yourself to that character as you can mm -hmm. um which is really tough to do for the boonies because i play like this backwoods like um murdering uh like piece of garbage so um i <laughs> wasn't used to being in that headspace and it was it was weird but it was it was exciting to do because yeah you don't usually get cast as a bad guy and things so yeah was this what was the boonie something that you were involved with writing or how did you get involved with that no um these uh the filmmakers are, are friends of mine um actually the director is uh one of the actors in the the wedding movie i talked to you about oh, the Bergeron okay. brothers okay and um yeah, no, he wrote this. It's very kind of Hills Have Eyes, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre kind of vibe. Um, I think people are really going to like it. I, I, I had to go do record some ADR for it, and it looks great. So um, we'll see. Damn, okay. That's yeah. sweet. Well, it, give me one second. I got I to gotta grab something. Okay. I, I see somebody that you might embody in some of your comedic roles. I see somebody in the background. Tell me about this fella. Oh yeah, I got one too, baby. Shit, dude. I see somebody asked in the yeah. chat here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, man, there they asked the perfect question because I got I gotta grab my man. Shit. Ernest P. World. Rest in peace, dude. Oh yeah. No, Ernest, I, I'm surprised I didn't say him earlier. Um yeah, no, he's a big uh big influence for me. Um I loved those movies growing up. And sure. um yeah, he was just uh 
He really uh, an unheralded genius. I feel like uh, a lot of people don't give him credit for for doing so. I mean, you can watch any one of those Ernest movies, and I mean, if you don't have a smile on your face, then <laughs> you don't have a heartbeat. So. <laughs> right, right. I agree. I, I I just recently bought this bad boy, and it was seventy five dollars. I don't know when you bought <laughs> yours, but I was uh, not too stoked. Uh, but I absolutely love this fella. He's he's amazing. Oh, yeah. Uh, this was given to me by uh, a former guest on our show, Jamie from Neon Brainiacs. So he, uh, he's a big thrifting guy, and he found this uh, with the original Damn. box and everything. But the box was all beat up, so. Oh, okay. All uh, right. Yeah, but I still got Ernest, so. Yeah. <laughs> so going back, you know, as far as, as uh, Slaughter Drive, you, you brought that up. So mm -hmm. let's say – if we were at a, a video rental store, okay, and they had a Staff Picks bulletin board, and they had Slaughter Drive up there next to three other horror movies, what three horror movies would you want to be next to Slaughter Drive? Man. This is the old um, Staff Picks. Staff Picks. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd love it to be up there next to maybe, like, uh, about your next how about that? Ooh, I like that one. Okay. So that's kind of mm -hmm. newer. I'm, I'm going on newer recommendations here. So sure. that was good. And um, about, uh, if we're talking like horror comedy, and uh, you know what? I'll say I'd like it to be put up next to uh, The Barn. How about The Barn? Okay. Um, All right. Those guys, are, those guys are friends of mine. And I just uh, filmed a cameo for The Barn Part 2. So, oh, hey. shit. <laughs> They know what they're doing, apparently. <laughs> nice. So yeah, that, I, I that, that'd be good company. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, it's Beautiful. great. Yeah, you got to see that one. Yeah, I think I think you would really like it. Okay. Yeah. Is it uh, is it Scream Time? What's the, the Scream does, Team releasing? Scream yeah. Team releasing. Okay, that that's what mm -hmm. it was. Okay, I was trying to think of who put that out, but yeah, they seem like they're they're doing they're doing a lot of stuff too in in the independent world and keeping real busy with stuff. They're great. Yeah, and they got a lot of really exciting things coming out. So. Beautiful. Okay. Awesome. Well, man, this is going to uh, wrap up. I do have still the finale for you, but if you want to pitch whatever you have going on, if you want to give some shout outs, this is your time, Ben. Thank you so much, my man. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on the show. Um, yeah, uh, just check out Neon Brainiacs. we got new episodes every Wednesday. Uh, if you want to hear me, Greg, and sometimes a guest, uh, you know, bullshit about uh, an 80s horror movie every week. Um, a lot of fun um if you want to check out like my film work and things like that uh check out bpo films uh we're on facebook we're on instagram um we have uh, a couple movies coming out hopefully this year you know we'll see um how it goes but yeah you can follow me on instagram uh ben deedles uh at ben deedles um yeah <laughs> You want to check me out, see what I'm up to, uh, that's a good place to do it. So, there you go. All right, man. So, this is going to bring us to our finale segment. And uh, it's a little bit of a play on, uh, on, on one of your segments from, uh, from the Neon Brainiac. So, I'm going to slap you with Ben's 80s budget. All right? So, <laughs> in Ben's 80s budget, okay, basically, you're directing a, ba a major, like a Transformers budget horror film, Okay. Okay. You, you get to choose any one actor, any one actress, anybody that you want. All right? But what really okay. sold the movie for the production company to pick this up is your pitch on the monster or the, the villain in the movie that's going to be terrorizing okay. the characters. What two characters are you going to have, the actor, actress, and what's this monster going to be, my man? Do the actors have to be living? Nah. <laughs> All right, cool. Um... Okay, monster movie with a Transformers style budget, man. So, Just huge. Um, <laughs> let's see. All right, I'm gonna make this quick. Okay, um, <laughs> let's go. Uh, so this is a monster movie. Uh, all right, I want to see Eddie Murphy in a monster movie. Okay, so oh, I'm shit. just going to say Eddie Murphy. Okay. Because yeah. um, I just think it'd be funny and it'd be cool. I know we, I know we got the golden child already, but, you know, I'm going to make this a little better. Hell yeah. yeah Eddie Murphy. Um, 
and let's get how about a great actress. Um, I'll go. I'll go Jennifer Connelly. Yeah, for reasons. Okay, <laughs> Jennifer Connelly and Eddie Murphy and the monster. I think it'd be cool if it was like. Kind of like the thing or something like that, like a like sort of like a shape shifting kind of creature that could, you know, turn into different things, turn into different monsters. That way, I have the budget to do like it can look like anything. So I, I can right. make it look like a werewolf or an alien or something like that, and it could shape into a human or whatever. Um, that would be dope. So hell there you yeah, go. that's Eddie Murphy, so Jennifer Connelly. And a shape-shifting fucking monster. <laughs> um, all right. I hear you, Columbia Pictures. Let's, uh, let's make this happen. Coming to a make theater near you. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Oh, my God. Well, that, that, that's, uh, that's beautiful. It made me think of, have you seen the movie Color Out of Space? I feel like I'm talking about this a lot lately. I have yet to see that one, but it's oh on my, my list. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, I can't start then. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Watch that movie, man. I don't want to... I don't want to pump it up too much and get you too excited for it, but Jesus, I cannot stop talking about that. That movie is so good. I love me some Nicolas Cage. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I, know. I know. You're, you're the, the, the Nick Cage fan. Some of the, there's other elements that you're going to be a fan of bringing up the thing. That's all, that's all I can say. Okay, good. Good. Yeah, Beautiful. It's on my list for sure. All right, sure. man. Well, this is going to wrap up. Ben, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate uh, this is the first half with Neon Brainiacs. Uh, like I say, Ben, thank you for your time, buddy. I really appreciate it. And we're going to come back with uh, your counterpart, Greg. All right. Yeah. Good luck, Greg. You'll need it. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, All right, buddy. Thanks for having Take me. Care. Man. Absolutely. It. All right. Bye, -bye. Bye, horror guy. And uh, this is the second part to uh, the dynamic duo, the one and only Neon Brainiacs. See if we can get him, Mr. Greg here connected. Greg! What's up, dude? What's going on, my man? How's it going? Not bad, man. How you doing? Beautiful, beautiful. Not too shabby. Uh, you're staying healthy, staying safe there? Doing the best I can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, man. Well, I just uh, I just had Ben on. You know, we dug into some, some, some fun territory there, and uh, it's only going to get more so from here on out. I certainly hope I can uh, fill those shoes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Basically, I have a couple of introduction questions for you, a couple of icebreakers, if you will. Uh, I've Ooh. got the, the, the majority of the uh, interview here is going to be, you know, the body as far as your work and uh, different things as far as your craft. And then I have, once again, a finale segment for you as well, Greg. If you're ready, Perfect. my dude, we're, uh, we're going to cut right into it. Hell yeah, man. Let's do it. All right. Three of your favorite horror movies right off the bat. Okay, I, uh, I did a little bit of cheating. Since Ben went first, I was able to grab some uh, visual props. Ooh, okay. uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to go with four, but one is technically a double feature. Okay. So I have to go with local legend, Mr. Tom Atkins, in both Night of the Creeps and Halloween 3. Oh, okay. All right. Because they're, they're both just so fun. Um, you know, just watching him just kind of ham it up as, you know, a, a cop or a doctor who's acting like a cop. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, like both, you know, Night of the Creeps is kind of more so on the comedy side than Halloween 3, but both still have elements that are kind of, you know, goofy and they're just consistent fun. And like, I, I watch those probably multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, What's the signature so, on the, on the uh, Night of the Creeps? That's the man himself. Holy dude. Uh, shit. Li Living Dead Weekend. Thrill me, baby. Right there. Best $30 I ever spent. God damn it. Stop <laughs> it. That is sick. Awesome. Uh, number two slash three. Uh, up until the filming of Bergeron Brothers, which I know Ben uh, talked about, mm -hmm. uh, this was the only film I had uh, ever been on set for, and that is the locally filmed Sudden Death with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Uh, I was raised in a, you know, a horror house, a hockey house. Um, so like an action movie that revolves around the Pittsburgh Penguins was just like right up my alley. And my dad took me down one day for some, uh, uh, you know, crowd shots. And it was so fun. Another movie I watch consistently uh, and just have a blast with. Hell yeah. And finally, last but not least, I have to go with my absolute favorite movie of all time. Better off dead. Ooh, okay. Uh, Hell this yeah. was actually I, I've seriously been searching for this tape for 
um, probably almost as long as I've been collecting VHS. Uh, my buddy EK from the Laser Graves podcast mm -hmm. actually came through and uh, sent me one from basically the other side of the country. And I was like, cool, I got my grail tape. And then Amanda from Ghoul on Ghoul, uh, our you know podcast friends, gave me a box of tapes. And there was another one of these in there. Holy <laughs> shit. So what are those I was chances? just like, yeah, I'm just like, you know, attracting <laughs> them like bugs. You know, I'm just like covered in peanut butter outside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's another one that's like super fun. Um, I've watched that literally at least 200 times probably um it, it's highly quotable it's it's just it's unmatched hell yeah okay all right so that's that's my cheat that's my cheating for beautiful i love it so now you're you know bringing up uh pittsburgh as i asked ben as well if i were to ask you as a native uh for a local food or a restaurant staple what would where would you throw me where you know where you, what what direction are you gonna point I knew as soon as you asked him that, that Permanis was going to be the first thing out of his mouth. And I fucking hate Permanis so much. Oh, really? That even like I, I've been vegan for like 12 years. And even before I was vegan, I was like, this shit sucks. Yeah. Okay. Like I, I, I am not a huge fan. It's the, the coleslaw that they put on their sandwiches is a, uh, it's like a vinegar based one, which I do not like. <laughs> I, I'm like a mayonnaise based, you know, coleslaw guy. So like, anybody's like, ah, Permanis. I'm like, don't waste your time. Uh, <laughs> my vote, my vote goes to uh, Spack Brothers Pizza in the Garfield mm -hmm. uh, neighborhood. It's actually right across the uh, street from longtime running venue, the Mr. Roboto Project, um, okay. which I've spent a lot of time at that terrible amount of time in my formidable years at that one. And, um, you know, being able to finally go to Spack Brothers, um, you know, it's, it's pizza, it's hoagies, they have wings they have vegan options uh you know it's it's a little pricey uh but they're they're definitely i think head and shoulders the my favorite restaurant in the city okay um now as far as like the vegan options because my wife kind of leans more toward that way she's not but the majority of time she acts like she is uh what you know right. what what type of stuff do they have there as far as you know like uh just main courses i should ask um you can get totally veganized pizza um they have cheese um I think pep, uh, vegan pepperoni and sausage too. Um, I haven't been there in quite a while, obviously yeah, right. with everything that's going on right. right now. But last time I was there, you could get like a pretty loaded up, you know, it's just like, you know, anything that I can't eat, but I, I want, I can just throw it on there veganized and it's all good. Oh, okay. um, but they do have like seitan wings that are pretty good. Um, my go-to was um, they had a hoagie they called the seitan Pittsburgh. So basically it was seitan instead of meat. Um, but it was basically almost like a Philly cheesesteak, but, um, it would have like, uh, like the vegan version would have like vegan mayo and, um, you know, fries, uh, the regular one had an egg. Cause that's like another Pittsburgh thing where it's like, we just put fries and fried eggs on everything. <laughs> um, but that, and I would get, I would add like, bu uh, Buffalo sauce to it. And oh, that okay. was just like, that, that was like, if I'm going there 99% of the time, that's what I was getting. Oh, okay. All right. That, yeah, that, that's the jam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Your, your horror origin story, where did it all start for you, Greg? Um, honestly, it all started with my dad. Um, we were a very big uh, Halloween celebratory family. Uh, we would always go all out decorating the outside of the house, uh, decorating the inside of the house even, too. Um, my dad was a huge Nightmare on Elm Street fan. Um, I think probably due to Dawkins' uh, involvement in the third movie, because he was... I mean, before anything else, you know, he defined himself as, like, he was really into hair metal. Um, okay. So I, I think that kind of, like, he was like, oh, these, like, Freddy Krueger movies are pretty cool. Um, so we would constantly be, you know, those would be on TV, like, around the Halloween season. Um, and it, it's funny that you mentioned that because I, I, when I was thinking about my origin, something that came to mind with uh, my dad was uh, the second show I ever went to and the first one that he took me to was uh alice cooper oh, in 1995 yes. who i mean obviously he bridges the gap pretty perfectly between like horror and you know like aggressive ish music hell yeah um yeah so i th I, I definitely have my dad to to thank for pretty much all of that um you know as far as getting into halloween getting into horror movies you know he tormented me with like my my buddy doll because i watched child's play and was fucking terrified of it uh with you know impressions of the crypt keeper and stuff like that um so yeah like uh, 
you know, from a very young age, um, we kind of embraced horror and Halloween in my family, which was really cool. Okay. All right. So now I, I had asked uh, Ben as well, as far as your guys' origin for, uh, for Neon Brainiacs, for your podcast here. Um, you know, and he was kind of mentioning, you know, it's kind of a brainchild from you, but what was, you know, so, so what were some of your inspirations as far as like you wanted to take on and do something, uh, you, you know, involved like this? Um, uh... There was actually, there's actually another uh, long running horror podcast locally called Werewolf Ambulance. And I was a big fan of theirs for, um, you know, for quite a long time before I even started my own podcast. And it was something like, uh, you know, I had a lot of, you know, copies on various um, formats of like horror movies from the 80s that I was like, oh, I've always wanted to watch, you know, Chopping Mall or, or whatever. And I figured, uh, you know, doing a show similar to werewolf ambulance but then kind of narrowing the scope a little bit to you know maybe just one decade um would you know it, it was just it, it, honestly it was just me wanting to check off a lot of movies that i had wanted to see for a long time mm -hmm. um and then you know someone like ben being able to work together with uh you know he's got a pretty broad scope i mean I think I, I went through our master list and I think about 75% of the movies we've done were first time watches for me, mm -hmm. um, you know, out of nearly 150 episodes. Um, so basically it was, it was kind of a selfish thing for me. Just, I want to watch more movies and this gives me a reason to do so. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. And, and it's funny too, because, you know, it seems like it would be a little less overwhelming, you know, choosing a certain decade, but you look at eighties horror and Holy shit. I mean, it's, there's so much shit out there that you just, that comes out all the time. Like I was, I was mentioning earlier, as far as like with vinegar syndrome or Severn or, you know, even scream factory putting out stuff and you're like, what? I've never even heard of this movie. Oh yeah. I mean like even like some of the early movies we did um, were just like things I had never heard of, but sounded interesting. And it turns out most of them were really bad. Like <laughs> I know Ben brought up, Home Sweet Home, I was like, well, you know, we did Blood Rage as our first episode, so by the time Thanksgiving came around, I was like, oh, there's another one we could do, and we were like, oh, that's bad, or like, you know, uh, <laughs> something like Ice, where it's like a, you know, a skiing slasher, uh, right. you know, some another early one like uh, Cellar Dweller, it's like, you know, oh, it's got Jeffrey <laughs> Combs from Reanimator, which I had also never seen before we started the show, yeah. um, but, you know, it, it was just like a really... You know, it, it's it's a very interesting hole to start digging because, like, once you, like, you know, clear the, the grass, which is basically, like, Freddy and Jason and Michael Myers and everything, you're like, oh, there's a lot of weird shit underneath <laughs> here. And um, I, I, will correct, I, I will correct Ben. Um, I, I do have a master list. Any letterboxed uh, users out there, there's actually a list on there of 80s horror movies and there's about 1200 movies on that list holy so i think shit. i did the math. it would take us probably about two decades to get through all of them damn it's a lot that's so crazy i know and that's the craziest thing too is it was like going through you know like the earlier like earlier years of like circuit cities and you know different things you know i would pick up a bunch of movies or even rentals you know and you just think like just seeing all the stuff there you're like oh yeah i know i know all the movies that are out there and then it's just all this other shit that resurfaces you're like by god how, how is there so much <laughs> right and just the sheer amount of stuff that's just been like you know lost to time or fallen through the cracks that like never got proper releases outside of like mm -hmm. a crappy VHS tape is like really astounding yeah yeah super crazy so what, what what would you say is your favorite uh movie that you guys covered for the show that you've never seen before um probably terror vision Yes. Uh, because that that just speaks so much to my just sensibilities as a person um just as far as like the comedy of it you know the the effects the cast i mean you have diane franklin john grise garrett graham mary warnoff it's just like this weird amalgamation of just like people you know from other cult movies making another cult movie that's so funny that like uh i remember um Alan from Werewolf Ambulance, who I'd mentioned earlier, um, actually recommended that to us when we had him on the show uh, to talk about Nomads, which is a very terrible movie. Um, <laughs> he's like, yeah, you guys should do Terror Vision. Uh, I think we did it a couple months later, and we were like, I was just like, where's this movie been on my life? Yeah. <laughs> it's just so perfect.
Yeah, that movie rules. I think the first time I saw that was on a Scream Factory. I'm trying to see if it, it's what it is. It was like a double feature. Video dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. So good. That's actually another one we did that's actually very fun. It's not mm-hmm. very good. Yeah, right. It's good to- Actually, really fun to watch. Yeah, entertaining. You know, enough as far as you know, pulling you in and keeping you with it. Yeah, I mean, if there's any movie where there's like a zombie that walks up to a blender and goes like, "How does this work?" You know, <laughs> that's, that's just the right. bait where I'm like, "Ah, oh, fish." <laughs> you know, what would you say on the contrary is the worst movie that you guys have covered for the show? Um, this is another <laughs> one. I know Ben said we were gonna kind of get some guff about street trash, but we actually got a lot of um kickback from microwave massacre because we both fucking hated it (laughs) i've never seen it it, it's not funny it's mean it's just like really just so stupid and like (laughs) you know you see it like you know if you're part of like the vhs community on instagram you see people where they're like oh my god i got the big box with like the glowing red eyes and it's like you know i've been after it ever since i was a kid and i'm like why like like I have movies that I like, you know, that I have sentimental attachments to where everyone's like, it's a piece of shit movie. But, like, I don't get mad when people call it a piece of shit movie, but people got mad at us. Oh, <laughs> damn. It was bad. It was just kind of funny. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I you think know, it's like the, the top of the bottom. Yeah. Okay. And, and, you know, it's kind of one of those things where I can see that as far as the horror community, not all, but I have seen different things where somebody has posted something, you know, that wasn't even, you know, that, that bad or somebody kind of bashing on something and just reading comments and you're like, oh my God, like, hey, go kill yourself. It's like, Jesus, it's a movie, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like, everyone just chill the fuck out. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, if you could, to a first time listener, if you could recommend any one episode, what, uh, what would you, what would you uh, recommend to them? I would definitely agree with the Jason Takes Manhattan episode. Uh, it is very long, but it is, it's so long because I tried to edit down like a three and a half hour file and there was just so Holy much shit. That I couldn't part with. Um, so I would say that and also our creep show episode um, that we did as our two year anniversary show. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we just kind of geek out on that. Plus I actually work at the uh, university that they used for the crate. So oh, I just, no shit. if you, want, if you want just like punished with facts, that's the one to go to. <laughs> Damn. That is awesome. That is so yeah. cool. And, and, you know, that's one of the things that I appreciate, you know, cause I by no means can say I'm a connoisseur of knowing all of the behind the scenes, all the different things, you know, but there's movies that you guys have covered that I'm like, yeah, I know a shit ton about this movie. And then I, I watch you guys' show or I, I listen to your guys' show, you know, and I'm like, oh shit, I never knew that. That's awesome, you know? And so it's it's kind of a perfect balance between, you know, the, there's certainly like a slapsticky kind of humor behind your guys' stuff as well as, you know, you listen to something and being a horror fan, more than likely you're going to learn a couple of things about the movie that uh, you didn't know that you thought you knew everything about the damn movie. So <laughs> it's awesome. I love it. <laughs> That's the thing, too, is, like, I am by no means, I don't think Ben would claim this either. Like, we are not, you know, I, I sometimes wonder if, like, the name of the show maybe rubs people the wrong way, where it's like, oh, these guys call themselves Brainiacs, so like, they must think they fucking know everything. I don't know fucking shit. Like, I just look all, <laughs> I watch a movie, and then I just look stuff up, and then just regurgitate it. That's pretty much it. I mean, oh, right. Hopefully, you know, hopefully we do it in an entertaining way, but, like, you know, I'm not like, all right, class is in session, and I'll like teach you. <laughs> No. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't think by any means it comes off like that. I, I've never taken the name, you know, as far as anything with it. It's just, you know, the amount of information that you get. It's not a bad thing, you know, by no means is a dig. You know, it's just, it's awesome as far as, you know, like myself being a horror fan and my friends, like, we, you know, we've had a couple, you know, a close group of friends that since, you know, middle school basically loved horror movies and, you know, constantly were looking at behind the scenes and books and just reading into shit and then listening to, you know, your guys' episodes. There's stuff that pops up all the time that I didn't know. So it's awesome, you know, definitely not a, not a negative thing whatsoever. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of the stuff I gravitate towards too. Like, you know, obviously as much as I love hearing people's opinions on the movies, they talk about with, you know, other shows that, you know, kind of do a similar thing to us. I'm always like, if you're going to tell me facts, I'm like, yes, like mm-hmm. more of that. Mm-hmm. So just being able to kind of, you know, be on the other side of that is fun. Um, but, you know, it's not like I, I knew everything about, you know, fucking, 
you know, psycho cop or anything like that. Like, you know, like, like I said, I mean, like most movies I'm watching for the first time. So it's basically just doing a little bit of research and just kind of saying, like, here's the things I thought were interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, you know, with the Internet at hand, too, you know, that's the thing is like it definitely is, is helpful and useful. And, and it's cool, you know, with having the entertainment aspect of it and the comedy with it, too. But then it's a fun angle to have, you know, the extra you know dialogue as far as the information that comes with it, too. So. Very nice. Trying to do. <laughs> Hell yeah. So now, in your research, okay, in your research for Neon Brainiacs, what is the worst low stakes chase that you've ever come across? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, there's been so many. Um, <laughs> What's the first that comes to mind? Maybe Final Exam. Um, I mean, that's just a very underwhelming movie, also. I mean, you have a, you know, just a very boring, plain killer no mask no nothing no motivation i don't even think he gets an identity at the end after he gets killed <laughs> spoiler alert sorry um yeah anything that's like chasing through the woods in a very low light with a very boring killer um th those are probably going to get the nod more times than not and i mean I, I would love to be able to give you a more specific thing, but that's happened so many times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's always a fun thing, you know, having like the certain bits that you guys have, like at, with Ben, I mentioned the dollar store version of a character, you know, of a character and then the, the low stakes chase, you know, and it's just like, Oh, where, where are they going to go with this one? You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mostly nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, no, uh, as far as, you know, not only you being, uh, into the the horror community, you were also involved in the hardcore and, and emo, you know, music. As far as uh, you were also a drummer, uh, how did that all come about? Uh, come about? Um, like I said earlier, um, you know, my my household was very, you know, em embraced, you know, rock music and everything. Like my parents, both their favorite bands were Led Zeppelin. My dad was very into hair metal. Um, so from a very early age, I was just like into music in general. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, probably around like the age of like seven or eight dookie hit so like that was fucking huge for me like green day was my favorite like my first favorite band and they were my favorite band for a very long time and mm -hmm. i still fuck with those first like four or five records um but as far as playing music um i actually started out playing violin in third grade um, oh okay just as oh like you know you, you seem like a bright kid you should do this it'll help your brain i was like okay cool um but then kind of as i got older and you know the new metal phase hit and you know eventually i found out about you know i, I kind of rediscovered punk when i was like in maybe eighth grade or so so this is probably turn of the century 2000 2001 um i was like well i, I listen to music that can be made by pretty much anybody you know, I want to start playing a different instrument. So um, I kind of fucked around with guitar for a little bit, but then I also joined my middle school's um, concert band uh, in okay. the percussion section because I, you know, I was like, oh, playing drums seems really fun. You just get to hit stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of my first exposure to that. And then eventually um, after showing a proclivity for that through the concert band. Uh, my parents bought me my own drum set. Um, I just kind of taught myself and, you know, got good enough to start in bands and, you know, 17, 18 years later, here I am. <laughs> Hell yeah. How long did you play violin for? Uh, basically from like third grade up until the time I graduated high school. Oh no um, shit. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I played in school and then um, I guess, I think it was like around the time where, where I got out of in the middle school, um, our uh, teacher in school was like, hey, he's like actually not bad with this. So I ended up um, being recruited in into um like a private work um that kind of played locally um you know just kind of made up of a bunch of you know virtuosos and then me um but that was oh, kind shit. of like my first foray into music like it you know obviously it's not the coolest thing to say but like i think really if it wasn't for that i wouldn't have picked up on guitar or drums very well or really learned how to write music which, mm -hmm. you know, obviously now, now in my 30s is kind of, um, you know, benef benefiting me pretty well because um, for a couple of the films that uh, Ben's working on, I'm going to be handling the composing for those, um, at least oh, in the plan. Okay. Um, so, I mean, without that, you know, of starting with like a classical instrument, I probably wouldn't have done anything with playing music. 
Oh, okay. I think the I think the uh, audio is lagging behind a little bit. I was just noticing. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm still like listening to everything you're saying. So I'm just sitting here staring at you. Greg. Okay. Hopefully this works. All right. <laughs> I'm out of the closet now. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy <laughs> tell me tell me about your your uh when when you were young your local music and record shops that you would frequent um i actually didn't have a whole lot of record shops that i would go to until i was older um i mean you know we had like national record mart and like kind of their offshoots uh actually in monroe Mall. At one point, we had three record stores, and they were all owned by the same company. Uh, there was National Record Mart, Waze, and then our local alternative station had their own branded store. Bit of thing, uh, just in three separate places in the mall. Um, but as far as like <laughs> venues, um, there were there were a few that were kind of legendary um, around that I didn't get a chance to go to a whole lot. Um, uh, Clogga uh, was definitely one of them. I was only there, I think, about three times um but, but i'm sure ben's got tons of stories about going there but the big one for me was uh like i mentioned earlier uh the mr roboto project um and, you know i started going to punk shows there um there were actually people moving from out of town at one point to book hardcore shows there um so there was a lot going on um up until the point that it closed i think in 2011 or so um 2010 that area um uh Rio, um in the garfield neighborhood so those those were kind of big ones uh for me were like, like um definitely were borrowing like just kind of random houses here and there okay cool um and when you're you know you mentioned too like getting your first drum kit what was uh what was your first kit uh it was a camber uh okay. that i I completely trashed. Uh, I guess that, you know, even early on, I was hitting way too hard uh, for that to just, you know, not withstand anything. Uh, I ended up uh, upgrading to a Pearl Export, which is actually what I still play. So I've actually been playing that kit for about, like, 15s at this point. Oh, sweet. Okay. But it's a, it's a man. It, it's taken all the abuse I've given it over the last, like, decade and a half. So Beautiful. Can't okay. argue with that. Are you, are you still playing in anything actively? Well, not right now, obviously, but the band Ben and I have uh, have pummeled. Uh, we haven't done anything actively with that for maybe uh, the better part of two years, maybe longer. Um, but I have during quarantine been working on um, maybe about like over a dozen demos of stuff we've kind of been sitting on. So hopefully, if uh, all of this can kind of clear up uh, with any sort of safety to be in the same room together. Uh, fingers crossed that we will uh, have some new stuff to work on. Sweet. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know if Pummel was still going or not, but that's that's uh, kind of make a little resurgence, huh? And hopefully. Um, yeah. After uh, right after, actually, it was right before the uh, the tape we put out on Head to Wall came out. Uh, our bass player had actually moved uh, halfway across the country, and uh, we were like, we kind of find another bass player, and then we got so busy with the podcast and just life stuff that we kind of put it on the back burner but you know i'm kind of getting that itch again so hopefully uh, sometime soon we'll be able to resurrect it sweet what uh what was your favorite uh when you were when you were younger what was your favorite your go-to rental store and your your, your go-to uh shop to to buy a movie if you're gonna go out and get something um in penn hills we had uh we had a west coast video and a blockbuster and that was mostly where we went um but I know Ben had mentioned that uh, Giant Eagle, our local uh, you know grocery store chain, had their own uh, rental corner. Uh, Eagle Video is what it was called. But uh, there was actually another uh, grocery store called Community Market. It was uh, a little closer to my house that definitely had their own you know like kind of tucked away thing where you could just like rent movies. And uh, it was there that I actually got tormented the most by the covers of. Child's Play 2 and 3. <laughs> I, would, I would walk by those and they would just scare the shit out of me. Um, but actually another one I did, uh, I was thinking about was uh, the library in like the municipality I lived in, uh, Penn Hills. It's actually right next to Monroeville. 
Um, I actually rented a fair amount of movies there, and I actually uh, kind of forgot about it until we did our Evil Dead 2 episode this last week, where uh, I would consistently rent a copy of Night of the Living Dead that actually came as a two-pack, and the second tape was a short called Night of the Living Bread that somebody <laughs> made in black and white. I think you can find it on YouTube. Where basically it's just like people walking around and then just someone throws a piece of white bread <laughs> from off the screen and they're like, oh no. Like I think there's one where like somebody's just covered in bread like laying on the on the ground. Oh my god. Um, was it was actually, it stupid I movies? I rented that so much because it was so funny. Was, was it stupid um, movies that made it? <laughs> it could have been. <laughs> I think this was this was long before uh, you know well th this was probably like an early to mid nineties thing. Oh, so shit. Uh, that was that was definitely something I remember writing a lot at the library. That is amazing. God, I'm gonna have to pitch that to Rob and see if they can remake that. That sounds so fucking funny. <laughs> Get him a big budget remake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. and that's our, uh, our our episode. If you want to give a pitch, I do have one finale question for you. Uh, but if you want to just let us know what you have going on, Greg, and uh, some of the stuff uh, you want to pitch out right now, this is your time, my man. Yeah, just uh, Neon Brainiacs, uh, talking 80s horror movies every Wednesday. Uh, we have a big back catalog of nearly 150 episodes, uh, 160 plus if you count our bonus episodes we did over quarantine. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Neon Brainiacs. Uh, you know, if you if you listen to the show and haven't yet, uh, we could use a lot of uh, you know a lot of help with like reviews and everything like that. So that's pretty much it. Beautiful. Yeah. And it's not hard to give a little review to, you know, tell somebody that you like their product and, and uh, you like what they're doing, you know, and especially you guys. Uh, it's a passion of yours. You can tell that you have a great time doing it. You have fun. It's not something that you're just sitting there day after day and just pushing through uh, us, you know, as, as fans absolutely love what you're doing. So uh, keep it up. We appreciate Thank that you. for sure. I'll even take the bad review. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. You know, every, every once in a while, there'll be a couple of them, but, you know, the, the haters are going to hate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I, I welcome all feedback. <laughs> right. So now, our, uh, our, uh, our finale, Greg, this is just for you, all right? This is something I, I culminated up a little bit. We started talking about Pittsburgh. Uh, over here, I got to show you the old, uh, the old Red Wing. Now, I can't be... I know I can't be too I can't be too stoked right now because Jesus Christ we aren't doing a fucking thing with that team, but uh, uh, I, I called our finale question the villains on the D. All right, so what we're gonna do here for villains on the D? You are uh, you know you've you were an ex hockey player correct? You played at one point. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you being an ex hockey yep. player, hockey fan, a Pittsburgh fan. Uh, imagine you're a forward on the Pittsburgh Penguins, okay, and you look back. And the defensive line is made of two horror movie villains. Who are they going to be? Oh, boy. Um, you know, I've always kind of gravitated more towards defensemen that kind of just operate on pure grit instead of, you know, like Brian Leach, he's fine, but I'm more of an Elf Samuelson guy. Sure. Um, so uh, with that said, I think I'd probably have to go with my man Jason, and then probably Victor Crowley, because they're both literally indestructible. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Uh, and with no problem clearing the front of the net, man. So, yeah, I got to go with Jason and Victor Crowley. Are we talking, like, Jason from, like, three or four that's a little more fast moving, or are we talking just, you know, he's going he's gonna to evaporate right in front of you and whoop your ass? I I'm talking soggy Jason from, like, six. <laughs> my, yeah, my man's got to be soaking wet, covered in bugs. <laughs> Oh my God, that's awesome! I love it. I love it. And uh, you know, some of those hypothetical questions—they're they're silly, and it's a it's a you know just a, a kind of thing that I try to come up with uh, as far as some of you guys and uh, some of the uh, uh, information that I gather, you know, in uh, in my research with you guys. So I uh, absolutely love both of you guys. Uh, I love your guys' show, and uh, I appreciate so much your time. And uh, you uh, you take care, Greg. Man, thank you so much again, man. Uh, you too, man. Thanks again. This was awesome. Lo-Fi Horror Guy, Neon Brainiacs, you guys take care, stay safe, take care, buddy. Later. Bye-bye. He's a lo-fi horror guy. Yeah, he's kind of a guy, but he is so lo-fi, lo-fi horror guy. Yeah, baby.